Good evening, everyone. My name is Joe, Joseph Corzini from Clark University. Laura, you want to say hi? Good, good evening, everyone. My name is Laura Martinez from Martinez Consulting. We're going to wish the candidates good luck and begin with opening statements, starting with Diana Biancaria. Thank you. My name is Diana Biancaria, and I'm a proud lifetime resident of our city and of our school, District C. I am a candidate in District C. I come with the endorsements from Local 272, Local 170 Teamsters, and AFL-CIO. I also am a former at-large school committee member, having the honor of serving six terms. District C consists of three elementary schools, Lakeview, Rice Square, and Roosevelt. We have one middle school, Worcester East Middle, and two high schools, North High and Worcester Technical. Some of my history is I worked for Worcester Housing Authority as an assistant director of resident services. I had the pleasure of working in the area of education activities with our students that were residents <clears throat> at different sites. I was also employed by Worcester Public Schools for a number of years as the district school to career coordinator. I worked creating various academic and career pathways enhancing our partners to ensure career readiness, internships with students, articulation agreements with unions, and preparing students for their careers with educational pathways. I created Building Brighter Futures at UMass Medical and College Community Connection, which was English and math with an internship for our students. I have 24 years in finance, working my way up to an assistant vice president and I also worked as the first female chief aide right arm to the mayor then, Raymond Mariano, with a priority in school issues and programs. As an assistant vice president, I had the honor of covering two branches in our city, one of them being right on Shrewsbury Street, which is in District C. I supervised numerous employees, including outreach for our community, and at times took students from our Worcester Public School System Thank you. to Washington, D.C. to see government. Thank you. I ask that you vote on Tuesday, November 7th. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. McCarrier. We're going to move to Germa. You have two minutes for your opening statement. Thank you. Our schools in District C deserve better representation. I am the candidate who represents change. My name is Gemma Kamara, the daughter of a first-generation immigrant from West Africa, Liberia. I am currently an at-large school committee member um, serving since 2021. This November 7th, I ask for your one vote to be re-elected in the new school committee district C. I am a proud product of the Worcester Public Schools. I graduated from Canterbury Street School, Sullivan Middle, and in 2011 from South High, top of my class, got a scholarship to go attend Providence College, got a double, um, a bachelor's in health policy and management, community health, and I went on to pursue my master's degree um, at New York Medical College, um, where I got my, my concentration is in behavioral sciences and health promotion. I have been working in school-based based, um, health in developing countries. I've taught STEM to fifth and sixth graders during my time in White Plains School District. I was an adjunct professor at Clark University and WPI, where I also um, you know, was the associate director for the Center for Wellbeing. I've been a director at the YWCA well, um, in the Department of Wellness and Health Equity. Um, I have an extensive public health background and I bring this um, to my role on the school committee. I'm running in District C um, to fight for equitable allocation of resources and programs needed for school safety to uplift the voices of parents and educators whose voices may have been left behind. With one term under my belt, I contribute in depth to the, our school committee deliberation structure and salient issues to driving our district needs forward. I served on the IHOC subcommittee um, that hired the superintendent. I serve on the finance and operation subcommittee, and I serve on the TLSS, which is teaching, learning, and student supports. As an alum of Worcester Public Schools, I am very proud of the progress we've made in WPS in the last year and a half. Your vote and support of my candidacy for District C is the single positive choice to continue our school system forward. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Nelly Medina. Hello. Two, two minutes. Thank you, everyone. My name is <clears throat> Nelly Medina. I'm going to read because I have a lot to say. So I'm a dedicated to, I am dedicated to grassroots organization and education advocacy. Over the years, I have been actively involved in our community. 
collaborating with numerous campaign organizations and with activists and families on advocacy efforts that have scanned a diverse spectrum of issues, concerns such as um, environmental justice, housing equity, food justice, reproductive rights, LGBTQ right, LGBTQ plus rights, policy and language justice, among and initiatives addressing youth violence. As the plaintiff for District 5 in the Worcester Interfaith lawsuit, I work to bring district level representation to Worcester School Committee, a significant step forward, amplifying the opportunities of previously underrepresented stakeholders like myself and members of my community. My aim is to foster collaborative, um, foster col collaboration with parents, educators, and stakeholders to establish communities um, and affinity groups focus on addressing community inequities, including those experienced by children with disabilities like my six-year-old son. I have leadership positions and experience as lead organizer for the Worcester Education Justice Alliance, the Parents Union of Massachusetts. I'm a parent organizer in, or, um, parent organizer in Worcester and have been for a while. I, did a, I had a parent report that I put together during the pandemic that was instrumental in the city of Worcester deciding where to spend ARPA funds. I'm an on the, gr on the ground, boots to the ground organizer. The person who has this assignment really knows, has to know how to bring people together. And that's what I'm here to do. Thanks. Thank you, Nelly. Turn to Kathleen, Kathleen. Good minutes. evening and thank you to all who organized tonight's event. My name is Kathleen Roy and I am running for Worcester School Committee in District E. The Worcester Public Schools has been a big part of mine and my family's life. I attended Elm Park Elementary Community School, then went on to graduate from St. Mary's High School, and attended Worcester State College. I've been married for, the, for 34 years and my husband and I raised three daughters, all of whom graduated from the Worcester Public Schools, moved on to college and are having very successful careers. When my oldest was five years old, we enrolled her in Ty Cobb Little League T-ball, not knowing that Ty Cobb would then become a fixture in our lives for the next 16 years. I was a coach on the board of directors, served as the president of the league. My main priority as a board and as a coach was to provide a safe environment for the hundreds of children that participated in our programs. One of our objectives was to encourage teamwork, sportsmanship, and that it's okay to lose, but take it graciously. My former players, now adults, still call me Coach Roy. I also served as an assistant district four administrator for softball on a citywide basis. My children attended Heard Street Discovery Academy and I proudly served as the PTO president for two terms, helping to raise funding to give back to the classrooms, to enhance the learning experience for all students, and to aid in teachers' needs. We also planned and expedited many fun events for the students as extracurricular activities. I also served as the parent liaison for Heard Street on the Citywide Parent Advisory Council and made many friends and proud to say we're still in touch. I worked as a substitute instructional assistant for the preschool at Quinsicaman Elementary and served as a secretary for Auburn Middle School. I've also always made a priority to give back to Worcester. It is my home and has been since birth. There are many things I've done in Worcester, but one of the things I'm most proud of is last winter we had 20 volunteers and served at the Seeds of Hope a homeless shelter. I've also run coat drives, um, pocketbook drives for Abby's house, and that is my time. <laughs> so please vote on November 7th and vote for Kathleen Roy Thank for District so D. All right, party people. So we, we've got through the opening statements. At this point, we're gonna transition to the questions. You're gonna get, uh, for the first question, one minute response from each of you. There'll be a designation for 30 seconds, and then I'll give you a thank you when your time is up. Uh, for the first question, this upcoming school committee will set the precedent for the roles of an at-large and district school committee member. What do you see your role as? We're gonna start with the German with one minute. The role of the Worcester School Committee um, is to govern policy, budgetary, and some hiring. Um, it is also, from what I've experienced in the one, you know, um, two, uh, one term I've, I've really experienced, um, to also be a voice of equity, to ensure that everything is equitably aligned throughout our programs. Um, and so that's a big part. Our program offerings um, um, and our student recruitment and various other programs um, and even support to support initiative of the superintendent in support of our educators. 
Um, other role for the school committee, and especially my role in terms of why I am running um, you know, on the school committee for a district seat, um, is like I, as I mentioned earlier, is to be a voice, a strong voice for all of our public schools um, and to actually shine the voices of um, schools in District C, such as the Worcester East Middle, Roosevelt Street School, that needs that support. And of course, to continue to be a voice for, for all of our public schools, which I've been doing in the past, um, in the past years. Um, and this charge, I can say, is more relevant than ever, Thank and you. I hope to continue the work. Thank you. Thank you so much. Diana, what do you see your role as? You have a one minute to respond. <clears throat> when I look at it as a district, um, this was my backyard for my entire life. So I figure with six schools, uh, we are looking at some of the pieces of the puzzle that we need for transportation, beautification, um, <clears throat> union articulation agreements, internships, uh, make sure that we're okay at UMass with our, our medical connection. Um, District C has been my backyard. But then I look at our city, and for us to move forward, we need to have a broad brush. So yes, I will be concerned with all of our students at all times. But there will be specific areas that I will look at for six schools. Thank you. Nelly, you have one minute. Can you share with us what do you see as your role? I see my role as um, a unifier. I want to bring people together. We have a district of 60 plus languages, 11 schools. We have some of the most divested in communities and the most wealthiest communities. And there are a lot of voices and a lot of cultures that are not um, honored at Worcester Public Schools thus far. I want to represent people um, regardless of their political party, sexual orientation, or gender identity. Um, when I found out there were no grassroots organizers running, I decided to run because I know what it's like to be siloed. I have skin in the game. I'm a mom. Um, what I want to bring to the school is a change of policy and how we spend money. Thank you. Thank you. Kathleen, one minute, please. Hi, my response to this question is rather succinct. I believe that the role of the school committee is to, to discuss and set the budget for the following school year. There's to discuss and set policy in which our schools can thrive and progress. I also believe it's about the hiring of the superintendent and ensuring communication between the superintendent and the school committee. We have a very diverse school system. We need to work within our means to be able to promote and help with every student, irregardless of what their, their race, creed, or, or, or anything like that is. Um, we have to explore their gifts and what they can do as far as bringing things to the table, such as the, the voices for Mechanics Hall. We have to impress upon them successful values and a successful future are theirs. Thank you. Thank you. For our next category, higher needs students, the question is as follows. As a, large urban, as a large urban center, Worcester is home to a diverse array of students and families from all backgrounds. In Worcester Public Schools, is Worcester Public Schools doing enough to serve the increasingly diverse student body or English language learners, special education students, and others who need extra attention. We're gonna start with one minute with Nellie. Yeah. Um, I think they're doing a better job than they have in previous years. I know that they're um, strengthening up their um, dual language program. Um, they have a new director. However, I think that a lot of students are falling through the cracks. Um, students with IEPs or students that come to this country and don't speak English, they have IEPs. Um, we're missing paraprofessionals, and so we need more staff to kind of fill that need um, that's not being met at the moment. I think that we don't understand the, the vast amount of languages that we have at Worcester Public Schools. Um, for instance, Upland Gardens is one of my um, communities, and um, there's 17 languages there. And so I think that we're doing okay, but we need boots to the ground. We need folks knocking on doors and assessing and figuring out where the need is, and also cultural intelligence. And um, I'm glad that you asked this question because that's what one of the strengths I'm gonna bring. I know how to organize diverse communities, and that's what I'm gonna do um, to the best of my ability to make sure that no child falls through the cracks and no parent, regardless of what language they speak, feels lost in the system. Um, thank you. Thank you. For response, Kathleen, we're gonna come to you. You have one minute for response. Thank you. The Worcester Public Schools are mandated by the Department of Justice to ensure regulations are adhered to in order to address the needs of all of our students. 
In some cases, the schools are mandated by the DOJ's office to implement services to specifically address the needs of our ESL students. One of the other things that have been added into the FY24 budget is five added school psychologists, five board certified behavior analysts, 12 wraparound liaisons. All of these add more support for a very, to support a diverse student body. It is very important for us to recognize all of the cultures that comprise the Worcester Public Schools. My ambition is to work feverishly to make sure all their needs are met. Thank you. Thank you. Nellie, you have 30 seconds for rebuttal. Do you want, do you want to? Do you, no? Okay. I promise we're going to get to Jermaine and Dan in a second. So we have another question. Um, we're going to start with Kathleen on this. This is around school safety. Worcester Public Schools is engaged in a safety audit, which will pr uh, provide a comprehensive review of safety plans and policies. Do you support the current school safety strategy, and what would you like to see from the safety audit? You have one minute. There's quite a few things I can't wait to see about the school safety audit. I think in talking to many of our teachers in many of our schools in my district, one of the things that is important to them is school safety. School safety also involves um, mental and emotional, making no bullying, making sure the children feel safe in their environment. I do would like to see though, and to continue to have a memorandum of agreement with the Worcester Police Department, the superintendent, our mayor and city manager, that includes an understanding to provide continued safety measures in our schools, including discussion on pro providing each of our high schools with an assigned police liaison officer. And the other police liaisons travel um, during the day between the lower grades. And I think that's a great aspect to have. Thank you. Thank you. Nellie, you have a minute to respond? Yeah, sadly, um, you know, when you think of school safety, some people think punitive. I'm thinking of transformatively. I think the ball was dropped when it happened that the resource officers were removed. I think some of that money that we, we were saving, we should have invested in our students. There's a wonderful program that addresses mental health, um, social identity, um, bringing students together, um, bias. It's called Palante. It was really successful. It was at the Holyoke School, and I would like to bring that um, to the Worcester Public Schools. One boy was, a young man was interviewed and he said that he used to be afraid walking through his neighborhood, but since he entered the program that he's not afraid anymore because he feels like he's in that circle all the time. Um, I think we can do that for educators as well. I think we need to <coughs> sit down and get to know, you know, what's happening. We have a lot of COVID trauma that needs to be addressed. Um, however, um, I also think it, it means mental health. There are a lot of students who I've spoke with who says there's not enough mental health services at school. Um, they're, at, they're the minimum, and so I would like to see an increase of that um, for overall safety um, and collaborative efforts amongst the whole um, education stakeholder communities. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Kathleen, you have 30 seconds for a rebuttal. Do you have any rebuttal? I would just like to reiterate that mental health, and we have to address the mental health, bullying is a very thing that is very, touches my heart because no student should have to suffer. I think that there should be programs in place in which to teach good, in a sense, good sportsmanship and to treat people the way you want to be treated. I also agree, I also do believe that we need the memorandum of agreement with the Worcester Police Department, and that should be, I'm stopping. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. This next question is on school safety. Worcester Public School is engaged in a safety audit, which will provide a comprehensive review of safety plans and policies. Do you support current school safety strategy? What would you like to see from the safety audit? We'll start with Diana. Thank you. I have and I will continue to be a strong advocate for us as school committee members to maintain safety and security in all of our schools. We need to follow through with the safety audit. I've been told November 16th will be um, a presentation at the school committee meeting and the audit will be presented and discussion will occur. If our schools are not safe, 
there'll be no learning and there'll be no teaching. <clears throat> I have stated that numerous times because I firmly believe that when you speak with staff, students, and parents, that is part of what they look at when they look at our school system. And in order for our school system to shine, we need to ensure we are safe. <clears throat> we cannot afford not to be up to date with maintenance, lights, locks, cameras, doorbells. We have to review each of our buildings. It's through our superintendent and police chief that a memorandum Thank of you. understanding is agreed upon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Same question for Gemma, you have one minute. Thank you. Um, uh, since starting on the school committee, we do have an MOU between the Worcester Police and the school department, and that was one of the things that our new superintendent made her priority, um, working with the chief at the time, the ex-chief the ex -chief sergeant, um, and building that relationship. We all value relationships with our police um, and our, using our SLO model. Uh, what I would like to see um, being inclusive in this strategy is a plan to um, weave in how we are going to include our culture and climate teams, our dean of students, these are new positions that we currently have, um, you know, um, within our public schools to be able to build rapport with the students, which is kind of what targeted public health strategies are, um, so which will curtail behavioral issues within the schools. We also have wellness spaces in our schools. So all of these, all of these plans should be in integrated into that policy, um, as well as the policy um, should reflect our physical building. So like we have a lot of schools that are not ready for, may not be ready or prepared to take, you know. Um, thank you, Java. Thank you. Diana, you have a 30 second rebuttal. So I'd like to add in that uh, with the memorandum of understanding, the reason that we would have the mayor and the city manager included in that piece of it is because the funding for um, any security and police and so on come from the city side and not the school side. So um, they should be at the table so they can discuss some ideas and concerns and it is part of what our city consists of. Thank you. Thank you. This next question is on MCAS. Massachusetts is one of eight states that requires students to pass a standardized test to graduate from high school. Do you support the use of MCAS as a graduation metric? What other metric would you use to measure academic progress? Gemma, you have one minute. Thank you. Um, I remember taking the MCAS and doing very well on it, and um, and so that I you know went on to pursue great things. But I did, to the, to this day I don't see the result in how the MCAS is a determining factor to success. I do believe from all of my work with with students across different districts and even at a university level, we do need to pay attention to um, hands-on, project-based learning. These things that will allow all students, students with EF um, English language as a second language, um, disability students to allow them to bring out their creativity into, um, into, into our schools. Uh, so an alternative that I will you know, suggest um, is including more project-based learning, explorational learning for students um, so that we can really capture their abilities um, as, they as they go through our Worcester Public School system and even taking those skills into the real world, um, which I think will be a determining factor of their success in the future. Thank you. Diana, you have one minute. <clears throat> Under the position of district school to career coordinator, I developed the College Community Connection Program. This was for our students, and they were able to take either a math course or an English course and then have an internship. They also were able to um, have the opportunity to receive a small stipend. This was to help them get prepared to retake the MCAS test. I feel as though we need to have a statewide review of how this affected our workforce and what can be done differently to measure our students' success to receive a diploma. Because I don't feel as though some students are good test, test takers, some students, it's not going to be one test that's going to make them successful. It's a combination. And I would appreciate the fact that the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, DESE, is responsible for this, and they need a major overhaul of how they determine what our graduation requirements are. Thank you. 
Gemma, you have a 30 second rebuttal. Yes, um, Worcester Public Schools have done great, uh, you know, great amount of work in the past, but one of the things with regards to what I've heard um, in the past work that was just detailed is that not all of those services were across, the school, uh, across our district. So I went to South High, there were a lot of great programs that were at South High. I realized after graduation that folks at North High and other schools didn't have the same skills. And that's why in the last two years, we've been pushing working with um, Quinn Sigmund College, working with Worcester State to bring these programs and to make sure that they're accessible to every student in our district, not just some students. Thank you, Gemma. All right, we're gonna come back to Kathleen and Tonelli. And this category is gonna be on teachers, the heartbeat of our schools. Teachers have been facing mounting pressure to combat learning loss and address the social emo and emotional needs of students. How do you think Worcester Public Schools can better support our teachers? We're gonna give them one minute starting with Kathleen. Okay, great question. And I have a ton of notes on this subject. Um, could you please repeat part of the question? Sure. Teachers have been facing mild depression to combat learning loss and address the social emotional needs of students. How do you think the Worcester Public Schools can better support teachers? Okay, while there are programs in place, we need to, to have more. We need to have more programs in place to, to deal with the diversity um, of our students. And I think it's really important to embrace the diversity in our schools because the students who come from other countries, per se, they are gonna need help with um, English as a second language, but they also wanna share their culture. And I think we should encourage that, embrace that, and celebrate that, because what a great learning tool for children to be, get to know each other and to embrace others. Um, and perhaps we could do that so for, by doing some events, such as a, a um, community, bring the dish from your country, um, teach a child, teach another child how to speak your language, tell us what's special about the country you came from. A lot of one-on-one -on -one I'd like to see activities. And as far as the teachers go, they have to study and maintain um, their knowledge in order to properly address the students and help, help with their needs. Thank you. Now, Lisa, you have one minute. Yeah, this is something I thought about a lot. Um, I think more science. My son is in the first grade, um, and he wants more science. He wants to do more activities. I think that the classes are so big and the resources are so few that there's not an opportunity to really be creative in the classroom. But when they do do it, especially like in music class, I see the children thrive. I talked to one educator from Gates Lane, and she mentioned that when the children from Gates Lane went to after school program, the bus would pick them up and take them straight from the school to the Boys and Girls Club, that the children did amazing at MCAS that their scores went up 40%. The minute that was taken away, the scores went back down. So we need alternative ways to uh, engage our children, creative ways to engage our children, and to give our educators the opportunity to teach. They, they got into the profession so that they can you know, show them what they know and, and to, be, to enrich the students' lives. But I think because of the class sizes and because of the lack of resources, we're not able to do that. And so I wanna, I wanna help change that and find additional resources to, to fund these programs. Thank you. Thank you. Kathleen, 30 seconds to respond. I'll keep this very short. I've looked into the programs with the Boys and Girls Club and the after school programs at the Y. These are fantastic, phenomenal programs. And we need to figure out a way, because there is minimal cost, but in order to, we need to figure out a way to get some type of funding to take that burden away from their parents. Because these programs are doing incredible work with our children. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Okay. We're gonna stay with, with Nellie and Kathleen for this next question on funding. ESSER funds have been largely used to forward fund Student Opportunity Act initiatives, school bus purchases for in-house services, expand summer or after-school programs, or HVAC upgrades. Do you feel funds were used effectively, and what are your priorities for SOA funds? We'll start with Nellie with one minute. Yeah, I think 19 million in buses was a really good idea. However, now we have an issue where we have an open contract for our um, ESPs and we're trying to recruit bus drivers. 
My question is, how do we recruit bus drivers to fill those buses to take our students where they need to go if it's not going to be attractive with an open contract? So I would like to see that settled. I think we have to treat these education contracts with more dignity and also step up to the plate and give them what they need so that they can you know, have what they need to, to teach our children. I don't think educators should have to suffer to, to provide for our children. Um, I also think, because I was the ESSER outreach specialist for the, the state of Massachusetts, I've seen that a lot of the money is not um, for specific programs um, to combat learning loss or trauma. For instance, we have 70% of all the foster children in, 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 are in the state or in Worcester County. A majority of them are in Worcester, and we don't have one program specifically for this demographic of students who have no representation. We should use the money for what it's intended to, to outreach and to um, rebuild communities hardest hit by COVID. Thank you. Thank you. Kathleen, your response? Thank you. Um, most people in the audience, I'm sure, do not know what the ESSER funds are. It's the equivalent of what ARPA funds were, but the ESSER funds were due to COVID um, for our schools. So a lot of programs were put into effect with the ESSER program. Now, what I worry about is 33 million of the ESSER funding this year for the, was in for the five FY24 budget. The true question, as I see it, is where will this funding come for these programs for the FY25 budget in order to continue to, to serve our students and those things that are needed? Review from schools come from many sources. Revenue for schools come from many sources. Um, however, I am worried about how are we gonna be able to sustain these programs? And yes, we have the busing, but um, there are some glitches with it. And real quickly, I recently just helped a parent whose child of special needs, her bus was constantly late and she was missing out on morning programs. I made, I made, I made talk to the bus company and the kid's been picked Thank up you. from school on time. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, we're supposed to seed programming with the ESSER and ARPA funding. It's not supposed to be a forever thing, and it's up to the district to find additional resources to keep those programs going. So it's not about um, sustaining or a cliff effect. There's no cliff effect if we're budgeting and prioritizing programming, programming for children and um, um, prioritizing those, those initiatives that we started with the money for ESSER. Thank you. Thank you. Next set of questions is based on outcomes for all candidates to respond. You have one minute. There are many paths to success after high school, whether through college or a career certification. One way to tangibly measure success is through wage data. According to DESE, Massachusetts public high school graduates in 2016 earned an average annual income of $36,000 within five years. However, Worcester Public Schools graduates only earn an average income of $29,000 no matter where they lived in Massachusetts. What are your plans, if elected, to improve post high school outcomes of any metric for our youth? Gemma, you have one minute. Thank you for giving me this question. So if you have followed my progress on the school committee, I, this is one of the things that, you know, along with Member Millman, we advocate on the uh, support of vocational education. I believe that every child graduating in our public school should come, should have the quote is future ready skills. This is our new you know, idea based on our superintendent and her ideas. Future ready skills. We need students um, to have those skills. We need students to have tangibles. We have um, vocational programs, chapter 74 programs in our public schools. Um, we have programs in our career and college um, de department that is um, helping students take early college courses. We need more students, to, especially students who are e um, English language learners and uh, minority students to, you know, take, make use of those um, programs. Uh, so within my time and even going forward, I plan to advocate um, for WPS to continue to do more in terms of providing opportunities that are skill-based so that when students graduate, they graduate with certification in something that is employable. Um, and we've done great work, and I think, think that we you, can Gemma. continue to do great work. Thank you. Diana, you have one minute. Throughout the community over the last few weeks, the Worcester Public Schools um, have, has gone to speak to different communities and they've asked what they were interested in for the new strategic plan. In this new strategic plan, oh, um, it, it talks about how they're going to have college readiness. 
It discusses reading, math, but it also has life and being prepared for life in employment, culture, safety, health and wellness. So all of this is going to be incorporated in the new strategic plan. And I'm very happy that we are looking at what we can do for our kids to not only prepare them for college, but to prepare them for life. When we looked at chapter 74 courses, we went from 12 to 28 with my hard work. And I will tell you under chapter 74, each student value is 16,491. Thank you, Diana. When they are not chapter 74, they're 11,043. Thank you, Diana. Thank you. Kathleen. This, this question really concerns me for us to future, the future of our students. The, the numbers you stated are poverty level. There's no getting around that. I believe that we have to better prepare our students either for college, if that's their desire, their, and they have skills from, we have to foster their, their abilities, find out what they're interested in, then, then find out what type of career path we can help them go, go forward to, to acquire. Um, one of the things I'm very passionate about is a lot of children are not school oriented. They have no desire to go on to college, but I also have no direction. Mike Rowe, I don't know if any of you are familiar with him, he has a program and it's about finding children who are interested in working with their hands and teaching them, finding out if they want to work in plumbing. Um, I hate those signs. Uh, um, and then he comes and he works with Thank them. Thank you, Kathleen. I'd like to pursue that. Thank you. <laughs> Nellie, you have one minute. Yeah, um, I spent some time watching the kids play in the summer at the after school programs and it occurred to me that those um, um, young kids who are in charge of the, the littler ones who are playing outside, they're not really trained. I had an idea um, that I've been writing down and kind of sussing out a little bit where we take these children who are going to be the counselors and we train them in 9th, 10th, and 11th grade and we employ them all year long. We teach them CPR, we teach them how to draw, we teach them critical thinking skills, we teach them how to do group circles, we teach them art. All of these things so that when they step into that role, they're more prepared. Not only will they be more prepared, but they'll be more confident. Another thing we can do is TRIO program. Well, eliminate the MCAS. If we eliminate the MCAS, then they can do some maybe critical thinking. And I think how children's genius is assessed, I think we should talk to them and ask them what they think. But um, there's a program at, at Quinsigamine Community College called TRIO, and it's for first generation graduates. It was really instrumental to me, and I think it can help children figure out what their next path is. Thank you. Thank you, Nelly. Next set of questions is on technology. Worcester Public Schools has purchased Chromebooks for students in the district. However, maintaining these investments will be critical as the computer age or break. How will you ensure that these technology innovations continue and receive adequate funding and support? How else should Worcester Public Schools integrate technology into the classroom? Gemma, you have one minute. So <laughs> there was a time, or perhaps we're still in the time where plagiarism is a serious offense. Um, and I am one, you know, member who talk about who is big on tech and, and technology, and even my five-point plan that I'm running on that I've always ran on um, list ways in which we can do that within our public schools. Um, but I appreciate that our district embraced the AI and chat GPT and our district went on to learn from um, associations across the nation in terms of how we can integrate that into our schools um, at the local level. However, like all good items um, in society, I think we need policy to protect um, you know, these new technologies. And while I would love to see more be done in terms of education and technology, I also do think that policy to protect two students and um, should be also at the forefront. Um, uh, and the same, the same goes for uh, educators in terms of their use of technologies in the classroom, um, such as creating lesson plans for you, through Chad GDP. I do think we need to support educators that way. Diana? Technology is rapidly changing every day, 
and the process at times can be extremely costly. We can review leases for our Chromebooks, we can check out what the costs are, we also need to include the time frame in the repairs of the equipment that we decide to purchase or lease. Specific grants may allow a budget area for some of the equipment, and staff also needs to have professional development continuously. If we purchase what the advantages are, has to be discussed and determined. A school budget has to have the dollars to maintain the present, and staff always needs to continue to research for funding under grants, federal and state. And we were fortunate to have individuals come forward a few years back to help donate the Chromebooks that our students are using, and we made a determination that it was beneficial and continued with them. Thank you. Thank you. Gemma, you have 30 seconds. So, um, yes, our one-to-one -one Chromebooks in our public schools, um, we've done a great job in the, you know, after, in the pandemic. Um, I do see the need for us um, improving in replacing our Chromebooks, which the district um, you know, is aware of those information, as well as, as, well as seeking other information um, or technical-based information to support students. Hence, the, the Spark Academy at Wawikas, that was one of a great initiative that our district um, put in place to promote and expand technology and, and within our district. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Gemma. <laughs> These next set of questions are based on cell phones. There is a debate to restrict cell phone usage at school on the state level. Worcester Public Schools allows for discretion by principals and teachers. However, the schools are reviewing their acceptable use for cell phones, earbuds, and other electronic devices. What policies would you support? Diana, you have one minute. This discussion will present some real serious challenges. I have concerns with the distractions and how consistent cell phone usage affects social and emotional behavior in the classroom. At this time, we need to have more discussion with the teachers. They are the front line. They are the ones that have to make a determination on what that policy is going to be and how it's gonna work in our system. It cannot be a quick response. It cannot be a board that is sitting there making a determination on technology. It has to be how it's going to affect the behavior and what it, the advantages are, what the benefits are. Keeping in mind, and this surprises me because I, I, we cannot be fooled to think that every student can afford to have a cell phone, that every student can have a cell phone every day and it be charged under their parents to then uh, have us use it as a tool. Gemma. Thank you. So I took an Android physics class in college where Android phone and tablet was used to upload educational um, apps for good purposes. It was a physics class, so I enjoyed it. I used the same idea that worked in, in Africa that donated tablets to work in schools. What I'm saying here is that if we want to pursue an educational policy with the use of cell phone, um, it's best that the district initiate funding for that um, to be in the classroom. We serve a vast majority of students who are BIPOC, um, English as a second language, language barriers, you name it. I do think that um, these students will enter the real world and they need to have abil professional abilities in terms of how they can manage phone. I love what's a technical high school um, policy with tech cell phone use. They don't use it in, for instructional time, they don't use it in the shops. They do use it when they are in the hallways and other places, but I do think that going forward, we need to investigate what they are doing because I sat down in a meeting with students parents and the district teams, and with the deans, it was just fantastic. I was blown away that students liked their policy, Thank so we you, need to Gemma. do more of that. Thank you. Diana, you have a 30-second rebuttal. I would like to hear from more of the teachers and more of the students, and I have spoken to a number of people during our neighborhood meetings that I've attended, and I have not had one response where it's been positive because the parents are concerned about the privacy of their child and what will happen when cell phones 
are used continuously. I do feel as though um, having the discussions with the teachers will enable us to have our facts. Thank you. All right, Nellina, Kathleen, this, this question is coming to you. Uh, the category of student needs. Remote learning and the pandemic have increased students' social and emotional needs across, the, uh, across grade levels. Worcester Public Schools has invested in wraparound coordinators and social emotional learning resources. How else should Worcester Public Schools respond to student needs? We're gonna start with Nellie with one minute. I think schools are at capacity. I think um, they're over the amount of um, students per, um, recommended amount of students per um, school counselor. Um, for wraparound coordinators, they did this, um, the this group at UMass Hospital under Heather Forky, they did a, a, a pilot program at Shrewsbury High School where they brought in a wraparound coordinator and a clinician that just dealt with foster children. The capacity um, was, was, was exponentially increased for the, for, the, for the wraparound coordinators in the school and they were able to address the socio-emotional um, um, issues um, and also act as an advocate for the foster children. I think that we need that in Worcester because we have so many foster children and that they're taking away the time that we, that we could be using to deal with not so serious or as um, emergency issues. Um, and so I would like to see um, more wraparound coordinators, but something specifically for the most highest at risk students. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Kathleen, one minute. Well, let's face it. The COVID threw us all for a loop and our children were affected quite deeply. Um, never before in our lifetimes or in our country since we've been alive, did we endure a worldwide pandemic. The shutdown of schools had a vast impact on students academically, socially, emotionally, and our schools are still playing catch up. It's vitally important to our students to provide the necessary programs, such as teachers, school psychologists, and adjustment counselors, to ensure the constant needs of students is met on a daily basis. They are suffering academically because almost, what, two, two three years of their schooling in person, missing their friends, missing um, out on the teacher one-to-one -one interactions. We're still playing catch up. And um, that's where I'll end it. Thank you. Thank you. Nellie, 30 seconds. Yeah. I would say it's less about catch up and more about increasing capacity. We need to increase capacity. We have too many students. And again, we had $552 million in this budget for this year, and not one program was implemented or even designed to, to take care of that demographic of students that are not only suffering from um, COVID trauma, but are displaced, that are moving around, that have no advocacy, and are often um, separated from their families. We have so many foster children in Worcester Public Schools that can be their own demographic. Thank you. Thank you. For the next category, we're gonna stay with Kathleen and we're gonna stay with Nellie. It's around parent engagement. Parent engagement in the education of their children is critical to their success. However, some believe that parents involved in curriculum decisions can have detrimental impacts to student access to information. How do you believe parents should be engaged in the schools? We're gonna start with Kathleen with one minute, please. I love this question. I can't tell you how much I thoroughly believe that parents should play a role in their children's lives in their schools. They are the backbone of their child's future success in school and beyond. Parents need to be heard and be able to have an open door policy to address their child's needs and any issues they need to be discussed. I also believe parents should be able to have a say in the curriculum Parents, uh, parents need to get, ask their children, at the end of the day, how was your day? What did you learn today? Even if it's a silly response, at least the parents are engaging. If we have pa parents, and let's face it, it's not easy. We have a lot of single moms, and, and they're working two, three jobs to do the best they can. And um, you know, we need to set up support systems to help these parents to be a part of their children's schooling. Thank you. Thank you. Nellie, one minute response? Yeah. 
we don't only have parents, we have grandparents, we have caretakers, we have single fathers. I think we should um, develop a few models of engagement um, for parents. We have also parents who don't speak any English um, and figure out what works best for each case and then you know work from there. I definitely think that not all of the, the ways that the school interacts as a mom who has a first grader in Worcester Public School is sustainable. Um, the hours that they give us um, are not always doable for parents who work two and three jobs and so I think we could do better with that. Um, but I think that the current, um, what exists now is if you can make it, you make it. If you don't, you don't. We gotta do better and be more intentional about parent engagement. Um, we gotta be on the floor and we gotta assess and do, um, um, what am I talking about? Um, surveying parents and asking them how they would like to be engaged and what would be the best mode for communication so that they can show up for their children. Um, but then again, um, there's not only just parents, there's foster children, grandparents, and caretakers, so we have to be cognizant of that as well. Thank you. Kathleen, you have 30 seconds to respond. This mic. I just want to reiterate what I said, is that we have to make sure that we have programs in place for all our students and their parents. Encourage parent involvement. Encourage them to come into the schools to volunteer. We have to set up these programs that will help all parents regardless if they need help with ESL, if they need help with parenting. We have to set up these programs and do it very, very fast. Thank you. Thank you. These next set of questions are on Worcester Technical High School admissions. Worcester Technical High School receives thousands of applicants each year with a limited number of slots available. What is your position on the admission requirements? Are there any updates that you would endorse? Diana, you have one minute. Excuse me. Worcester Technical High School has many benefits and advantages. However, uh, when I was on school committee for six terms, I worked diligently to ensure that North High also offered programs South High, when we built the new school, had programs, and they were all under the certification of Chapter 74, which also um, is what Worcester Technical ha High School has. So when we look at the admissions for Worcester Technical High School, yes, we do have a number of students that apply, and they do have to wait. We have a waiting list. Unfortunately, the idea of going to that particular school is you're going to learn hands-on and you're going to learn what you're going to do in college and you may not decide to go into that career. Would I like to see the revision of the admittance for that school? Absolutely. Would I like to be involved in that? Absolutely. Thank you. Gemma? So, um, Again, it looks, we're talking about allocation of resources, which is one of my primary things here. Um, we have pathways in some areas in the city, but not in other, in, not in other areas in the city. So for the last two years, uh, my first term, I've been working, advocating for there to be pathways um, for a lot of programs going into our high schools. Um, when you go from Forest Grove Middle to Doherty High, they have chapter 74 programs that can, if you do apply, will afford you or, you know, with the intelligence to go into Worcester Tech. Um, in other areas in the district, we don't have that. I do know that, yes, um, South High now have other diesel programs. Um, North High, there's some new EMS programs that, you know, that were put in place in, within this, um, within the, the last few years um, working in the school committee. I do think, and um, currently we do have a certain amount of numbers for, for in our quadrants that are allow that, um, um, that is selected from to get admissions into Worcester Tech, I do think we need to do more in terms of really creating pathways for students earlier on so that Thank we you, know Gemma. where the career path is going to, to, to um, Thank lead. you, Gemma. Thank you. Diana, you have 30 seconds to respond. As an at-large school committee member, I promoted and advocated for our middle school students to visit our high schools, not only visit Worcester Technical High School, and at Doherty High School, we will have three Chapter 74 courses. At North High School, presently we have two, and at South High we have three. Do we have a different variety? Absolutely at Worcester Tech, but you also have choices at your comprehensive high schools. These have to be looked at by our parents. There are offerings 
throughout the city. Thank you. Thank you. This next set of questions is focused on strategic plan. The Worcester Public Schools is engaging in an update to its strategic plan. What are your priorities for the update? And how do you plan to ensure it's implemented? Gemma, you have one minute. So one of the big things about the strategic plan, even as we started, um, that you know, I, when I realized that we didn't have a lot of um, fam community engagement, I reached out to some organizations. Number one, I was, I'm curious to understand what was our engagement plan. I'm glad that things have now since, um, you know, there's more engagement now with different organizations. That's one in primary. Parents are engaged, that's also essential. We have community organizations like WEC that is essential to that entire plan with the Worcester Research Bureau, which I love all of their research ideas that they do bring. Um, but we, that was the primary thing. And I think um, with these groups over the next you know, um, few months and um, the final copy of the um, strategic plan, I do believe that um, we're headed in the right direction. We know what is going on within those strategic plans. We have updated. The, we are updated consistently, even social media um, information is projected, and everybody knows like what is going on with regards to the strategic plan. And I do think we're in the right direction, um, and as a school committee member, even at the local level, going for District C, um, I, you know, I'm, I verge to continue to work with our Thank district you, to Gemma. implement those, those plans. Thank you. Diana? With the new strategic plan, we're going to be able to have a lot of discussion as far as growing our own for teachers. We'll have the courage to turn around and say, we have to be ready for life and preparedness as the earlier question discussed. College readiness, climate, culture, a safe environment, health and wellness, caregivers. It covers an array, family engagement, community. This will be coming out in December um, when I spoke with our superintendent's office, uh, most recently as of today, and I asked what areas have been cut out, and we've been told that none of them have been cut out at this particular time. So we're looking at a plan that may truly fit all of our kids. And we have looked at strategic plans prior to that have um, lost some of its momentum. So hopefully the goals that are set, we can measure them, and we have the fiscal responsibility to follow through Thank and you. also get updates. Thank you. Gemma, you have 30 seconds. Yeah, um, I'm glad that um, my, can't, my, you know, that I to, to hear such good news as far as the, um, the, the plan meeting all the needs because that took the work of the new administration, the new superintendent, um, the governance team, and all the community members. And it also took bringing communities together, which we never had for a long time for which people fought to the nail to ensure we get here. So I'm glad to get that recognition um, as a current school board member, and I ask everybody to kindly consider the forum movement that we've been on. Thank, Thank you, you, Gemma. Thank you. It's incredible how quickly this night has flown by, but we are, believe it or not, at our last question, so I'm gonna ask this and give a chance for all candidates to respond, at which point we'll move into our closing statement. The focus is around buildings. Worcester Public Schools currently manages 62 public facilities with only a handful being built or substantially renovated in the last 15 years. As the buildings age, needs continue to increase, but so do construction costs. How should Worcester Public Schools identify, plan for, prioritize, and fund the next wave of projects? Again, you have one minute to respond. We're gonna start with Diana. When we uh, look at our budget book and we review what is in our budget book, there are more than 25 pages in just in facilities. So our school budget includes many costs, not only under facilities, but for, but for 62 buildings that need to be maintained and that need to be kept safe. So we need collaboration, we need to have communi clear communication, we need an updated report on what we have to have as priorities to ensure that all of the areas of our schools are looked at. We need to work together. We also need to get a detailed listing, inc including the capital improvements. When we look at District C, where I'm a candidate, we have Roosevelt School needs a parking lot because they need help with their transportation. Worcester Technical High School needs help with their traffic congestion. 
Worcester East Middle needs beautification. So when you walk up to that building, you want to go in there. You want to be a student there. Thank you. You want the auditorium fixed. Thank you. Gemma, you have one minute. So uh, we've done a lot of good work on the finance and operation with my entire um, board members, school committee members here, um, with the administration and um, the new city manager, which we've never had for a while. Um, the mayor also um, being inclusive and Mr. Brian Allen. So we did an audit um, of our buildings and we know which um, buildings and, and priorities that we need for such that we allocated about 14 million in the budget to and ensure all of that. We have been on it. We, for, we have been on it. And sometimes when I look at, you know, um, why we have crumbling buildings, why we have poor infrastructure, I ask myself, why is it that it's just taken now for us to, to be on that track? And that's why um, folks coming out and, you know, and, and voting people that can continue this momentum is highly important. Um, I do want to say Ed Markey, he is, um, you know, his new bill. I look forward to supporting that bill that would bring um, trillions of dollars um, into funding, you know, new infrastructure for, for schools across the nation. And some of that dollars will come to Massachusetts and Worcester. Um, so I thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Kathleen? There is currently $14.3 million in the budget for capital improvement plan. And that needs to be prioritized with the school superintendent, the mayor, and the city manager. Schools built in my district E need imminent repairs, and we would work, need to work together as a team to address facility issues and challenges that require imminent attention and, and repairs. So one of the things that I really think we need to look at right out of the gate is the fact that windows need to be replaced. Some of these parking lots, um, playgrounds, need to be repaired. Not all, because a lot of them have new playgrounds, which is awesome. Um, some of the other things we need to do is make sure our custodians have all the equipment that they need in order to keep the schools clean and an environment healthy for the students and teachers. And my sign says I'm done. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Nelly, good morning. Yeah, um, I don't really see the money in the budget for the, the need, the great need that we have. However, all the schools across the country are in the same um, way. They were built, you know, 100 years ago, some 50 years ago, and the infrastructure is not built to support as many students as we have today. Um, they weren't made with them in mind. So I think that we should kind of figure out what exactly is happening around the country. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. Uh, I think working with the National Education Association is a good way to go. I know they have a Go Green program. Um, something we should be doing is absolutely retrofitting all our buildings. The money that we save on electricity, we can use and put back into some of the infrastructure issues. But I think it's beyond um, anything that we can do locally. I think we have to um, lobby our, our representatives and our senators um, and make sure that there's money in the budget or some new programming that can sustain um, the work that needs to be done. I'm also a big fan of my ex-employer, um, Ed Markey, and this new bill, and I'm hoping that will yield us some kind of, um, you know, um, way to um, fund the, the need on the ground and have our children learn in buildings that Thank are you. safe. Thanks. Thank you. At this moment, we're going to move to closing statements. You have one minute for a closing statement. We're going to start with Diana. I would like to thank everyone who participated in the audience this evening and all, obviously um, we had a lot of work that had to work, put, be pulled together to get this accomplished and um, it's, it's an honor to be sitting here. Uh, I, I served six terms on school committee and I look at what, how great we have moved forward, how great our city is and our school system is our most important public resource and we have to continue to believe that and know that. I am a candidate in District C. I ask for your vote on Tuesday, November 7th. We have six schools. We range in years from 2011 down to 1922 for our buildings. So do we need to have some repairs? Sure we do. But you know what, those buildings may be old, but the thoughts and the ideas and our students are important and right up there. What I ask is that on Tuesday, November 7th, I not only have your Thank vote, you. but you get out and vote. Remember Thank to you. vote. Gemma, give me a minute. Thank you. District C has 
District C has seven schools. Um, there is four elementary schools. What I didn't hear was Grafton Street School. Um, we have one middle school that has been, that has suffered, and I think when you look at all the four middle schools, East Middle needs a lot of support. Um, Roosevelt Street School, yes, the traffic issue has been there for so many years, but it took this administration to bring change to that. This new superintendent has an idea, and this idea requires people with bold and robust skills to help move things forward. And I'm proud to have been elected in 2021 as my first term. And um, I'm proud to have been a voice in, um, with regards to wellness and mental health. We have a, a plan. We have our secondary schools have wellness rooms. We're not expelling students. Um, we are you know, um, providing um, therapeutic supports for them. Um, I'm proud of the director that we've hired for the special education department as well as our multi multilingual program. We need candidates that can think on their feet and articulate clear vision and plans and goals. And, as, um, and I ask you um, for your vote on November 7th for re-election on District C. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Nellie? Yeah, um, we have one of the most diverse districts. Um, I've been doing parent organizing for over a decade, and um, this is beyond the PTA, this is beyond Hurt Street School. This is about lives and the balance and a community of immigrants that really need to be outreached. Um, I would like to represent the district because that's what I've been doing this whole time. I think that we need cultural intelligence. I think we need to represent and respect people regardless of their um, um, sexual orientation. Um, their gender identity, um, whether they're Republican or Democrat. I think that we need to respect immigrants. Um, you know, we don't need um, daughters of the Confederacy or um, deconstructionists coming in and, and repealing um, the progress that we made. And so I ask that you vote for me for progress because we need to be moving forward, not backwards. I've been in the, I've been in the streets for a while, on the ground working with parents, and I've never heard of Kathy Roy. And so we need people who have been there, who have a connection to the community to move the work that's excellent work of this administration forward. And I'm the one to do it. Thank you. Thank you. Kathy? Thank you very much. Well, first of all, the people in my community and the people I engage with have never heard of Nellie Medina. So in closing this evening, I would once again like to thank everyone who put this event together. I have one thing to say. My entire adult life has been centered around helping children and their families from every walks of life, including my own family. While I am proud of the things I've been able to accomplish, both personally and professionally, I want to emphasize that I could not have done this on, any of this on my own. It takes a team to do anything successfully, and there is no I in team. And therefore, I'd like, I look forward to working collaboratively with my colleagues on the school committee in order to get things done. Therefore, I ask for your vote on November 7th and promise to serve the students and families of District D e to the very best of my ability. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'll just say on behalf of uh, Laura, a South High graduate, uh, myself, a uh, North High graduate who met when we were 10 years old at Millbury Street School on Perry Have. Uh, this has been a great, an amazing evening, and we appreciate your commitment um, and your willingness to stand up and fight for our schools. Excellent work. Thank you. Thank you.